that project that I actually saved called the slideshow, even though I created that new project while we had all that from the previous project loaded in. But if I just open that project file that I was going to get started with, it's actually going to open empty. See that? But I don't have to fight with that previous project that's still in. Here. Now, to get some things going, let's go ahead and show you how to get those slides in, right? So I've got my photos here. I'm just going to select those. Oops. You select that one. And I'm going to drag them into the screen. Drag them into the import section. Okay. And you see they're all loaded in. And this might be a good chance to go into list view so I can see them all and select them all. Now, drag me to here to create the sequence. Drag it into the sequence. It knows to drop them all into in proper order into that section there, okay, in my V1. Now, I don't know what the settings are for each of these photos because it based my, my sequence settings on my first clip. So I might very well want to go to my sequence settings and verify that I need a 1280-720, which is AVCHD 720 square, 2997, and hit enter. And now I have the proper settings, which is pretty much the same as it was. Now, the tutorial I provided is pretty much going to be about 85% of what I'm going to show you here. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to select them all, hold an alt, and drag them to get now a duplicate version of those images. And I'm temporarily going to hide the top ones. And now I'm going to go around here, and I'm going to scale up. the bottom images. So that they fit. Remember, we don't want that negative blank space. Select. Select. So I'm just fill, scaling these up so they completely fill my program window. That one's fine. Let me change that. All right. So all I've done is scaled up the bottom copies. Let me go to the beginning one here. Go into my effects options. Find my video effects, find my blur. And you see, I've got all these different blurs to mess with. I'm just going to choose good old fashioned Gaussian and I'm going to drag it onto the first one. That allows me to roll to the bottom and give myself a setting for that blur. Now, watch how cool this is. I can then highlight that setting from this first one, copy it, select all the other ones and paste, and now all those backgrounds are blurred. Just that quickly. Yeah. And so I'm done with those. Now let's unhide the top version. And here, I'm going to make these fit better so that they are completely visible inside the frame. Vertical images need to fit vertically. And we're done. 
So they all fit now inside the frame over top of the larger blurred out version. So again, there's no black background. It's just sloppy. All right, let's go to the first one here. And I'm going to do a couple of the things here. Let's go ahead to the perspective window. Okay. Now I can go ahead and I could put the drop shadow, see, and change the drop set shadow settings here. To say uh, distance, just to give it a little bit more separation. In After Effects, we did the uh, let's see, let's generate. I'm looking for that option where we can bevel the alpha channel a little bit inside of after effects. Can't find it. Bevel. And there it is, video effects obsolete. That's going to add it to the bottom. Thickness, its intensity. I can even change the color to being something like black. So it pops off a little bit better. Oops, that's not going to work. There we go. It's kind of what I was looking for. Something like that, just to give it a little bit of separation. And now I'm going to select drop shadow, shift bevel alpha, get copy, select all these, and paste them on there as well. So you see now they're all, it looked like it gave me my drop shadow. No, didn't give me the drop shadows. Let's try. Copy. Select them all. Paste. There we go. Now the top ones have a drop shadow and a bevel. That's why it was looking so weird. I was beveling white over white. You can't really see bevel on the white. All right. So now we're ready to think about animating or having these do some interesting movements or scanning across. And I'm gonna use a very similar technique again that we did in After Effects, which introduced 3D. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to Video Effects, it's the Leap Level Alpha, so we get all of our effects back, and go to Perspective Basic 3D. And I'm gonna drop that Basic 3D on the first one. This gives me the option at the very bottom and again, it makes a difference the order these are in because I wouldn't want to put the bevel and I wouldn't want to put the drop shadow on the underneath the basic 3D because then it wouldn't give me the true bevel because it's beveling the alpha chain. It's beveling the cutout effect. Okay. And you see, I get swivel and I get tilt. What's swivel do? You see that? What's tilt do? And I'm able to create what you can call an initial position, swivel, tilt. Okay, let's go to the end of the clip. Or I can even go in the middle, it's even easier. Let's choose a negative value and a negative value. Now I can grab those new keys. See, it's an auto keyer because it activated the blue when I told it to activate it. And now I get my basic 3D function. Watch what I'm going to do here, though. I'm going to copy the basic 3D, paste. Let's see, is this one going to work properly? Yes, it does. Select the next one, paste, skip one, paste, skip one, paste, skip one, and paste. So now every other one is have that has that same kind of swivel tilt movement. Let's go to this guy. And I'm going to paste again. Only this time I need to highlight the basic 3D. You see, it gives me my keys in this little window. And all I want to do here is just swap them. So again, this is going to give me that ping pong action. 
Okay, so now they're swiveling basic 3D and tilting in the opposite direction. Highlight that basic 3D, copy it, and select every other one and paste. Beginning, hit the space bar, and you see now. Now you see it's got that red bar. That red bar is basically saying, okay, you put keys on this, so I may not be playing this full speed right. And this is where we could actually do a pre-compose or you know, let uh, tell the computer to go ahead and render what I have here right now. But I, you know, I could change the quality down to look at it lower resolution. You see, I'm currently looking at it at full. If I go quarter view, it will actually play back faster. But you see, they're all animating and swiveling, same timing, same opposite direction every time. All right, what else can we do here? Well, let's look at some audio. Again, that, that. Let's find some music. Now, it's really interesting about music here now is that so the videos I used last week, I recently have been building more, more courses for other, other uh, campuses. And the videos are getting so large that, um, it's getting difficult to upload those online. So I actually recently launched a YouTube channel and I put about 35 hours worth of tutorials uh, available now, everything from Maya to visual effects, to Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Premiere getting built right now as I'm doing this. The problem is it flagged the fact that I used popular music in the After Effects files, right? Copyright, trademark music. So it won't allow me to have advertisements for those videos. So it's something to remember that it's very important that if you're going to use, that you don't necessarily use popular music, but rather use free music. Or if you're not, you know, if you're going to put something out there, you can even choose music that they already allow you to use. So I'm going to come here. Let's just drop, make sure I get my project folder open. Drop in some music. By the way, you'll notice when I drag these photos in there, they automatically put them at just over four seconds a piece. That's just the default setting. If you need them, you can select them all and minimize the time as well. Or because they're stills, you could just razor blade. Let's drop some music in there. There I get some drums. Obviously, it ends right here, so maybe what I'll do, just because it's already a nice audio file, maybe I'll just make it a little less time. Yes, they will sound like they're sped up a little bit. That's okay. I'm just trying to get it to last. And then, of course, I can look at my meter to see, am I peeking into the red? Looks like I'm peeking just a little bit into the red. So maybe what I'll do is just go to the audio, deactivate the levels, negative three decibels. And even here at the very beginning here, I could very quickly key, go to the very beginning, and just set keys for decibels, not unlike we did in After Effects. Go ahead, just nudge that a little bit. Maybe we need to zoom in a little bit here. I don't know, I like that, okay. Situation. that then make sure again we trim off the extra audio you see it drifts off to about here again i can move my marker in or i could just do my little razor blade here and say i want i don't want any of that start about there 
looks good. It drifts off at the end. Or I could even come here again and put an end marker to say end the sequence clip. All right, once again, I can put my name or watermark in there. So we're done. I'll just do this if these are yours, but if they're not yours, you don't do this. Let's come here to my text section. I kind of like just the font I've got there, just maybe make it a little bit smaller. Change the font on me, maybe something bolder. smaller, just need a copyright, just need a little watermark. Put that over here on the side. And remember, we still have opacity settings that we can make here. So I could tell this to be, you know, an overlay, a multiply or something like that. I want this to last the entire length. And very quickly here, I can put in a command or control D to give myself a little bit of a fade in, fade out for each of these. Okay. Pretty simple, pretty to the point. Again, simple save because I already had it as created a project before I even opened, I opened the project. Time to make the video, file, export, media. Oh, I actually forgot one more thing I wanted to show you. Ah, and that's playing around with this panner, okay? Watch what I can do here. Now at CC, it's already key. So I'm gonna deactivate that key, open it up. And you see what it gives me is left and right. And that represents the left and the right volume. So imagine if you are doing something and like, uh, a car drives by really fast and you want to make that sound as if in your headphones or in your surround speakers that the volume of the car is going from right ear to left ear. You know, you can do this by playing around with the panner. So let's just say in the beginning, I want it to be left ear key. I'm going to skip one. And now I'm going to take this up and go all the way to right ear. You can see it's building in this little graph right here. It's building that key of that value. And then I'm going to go skip two. So this one's going to be all back to left ear. Go back here, all right ear. So again, you're playing with stereo sound, which gives you left ear, right ear headphone capability. Maybe here I will go, I'll just go middle. So now you listen to the audio and watch, watch the audio meter on the right. And you can see how I'm controlling the audio. All right, now I'm happy with it. And again, there's so many other options we can do here. Like I say, if I have a photo that's not very good, or I can do color correction, any of these effects that we've seen going all the way back to Photoshop are all capabilities, adjusting, color correcting, you know, all these, you know, here's your levels. That's, that's the easiest way, right? You put that right on there. And that gives you now the actual level adjustment you see here, which is a little bit different than what we saw, because that's basically black and white. You know, but you would want to probably find the middle levels, which is you know, of, of improving that image. Time to make the video. Again, remember, Premiere Pro will be empty if you give me file, export the media. This will launch the 
encoder window. So I'm building my video kind of on the view. I don't know why this isn't. Let's try once more. Next media. There it is. Okay. So again, I can verify how nice and crisp and high quality it is. Uh, come over here, H264. Yes, presets. Match or remember, this is going to be, I believe this is supposed to be either a Facebook 720 or a YouTube 720. Not sure. It says it needs to be a YouTube 720. So there you go. Oh, I can come here, find the YouTube 720 HD. There we go. Output name. I sure don't want that as my name. And I got to double check. Location, I'd show, save, and export. And you can see it goes really on. So I'm not gonna let that finish up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel that, get out of there just because I wanna keep going with the visual effects side. Or do I wait 45 seconds? Now, in reality, if I was to do this with somebody else's photographs, these, this is, uh, these do not belong to me. There's this one actually does have a watermark already that you'd wanna obviously give credit to where credit is due in your video. Because even if I wanted to post this on YouTube, this would not work as a video. Now I can do that in the name of education on a tutorial, but not necessarily uh, trying to you know, promote my own channel as this is all my work. All right. Video was exported successfully and it is in where it needs to be. So again, even if I wanted to here, right, I can go ahead and make a new project while I'm here to start for the next one, right? Come in here. I'll call this VFX third part, the right folder, hit OK. However, I'm going to want to get rid of what I've already created. One thing I can also do to get rid of that is I can come here and close these panels. And you see now, all I have is my VFX project panel ready to go. But remember, we're going to want to get rid of all of this as well. And the sequence settings is going to need to be back to an HD, AVC HD 1080. Okay, and now I'm ready to start bringing stuff in. So it's just another way to kind of think about this. Now, as I stated before, these visual effects tutorials, this is one here, or this is the one that does double exposure. But if you go and you just Google these or YouTube these, you can see, you know, I, these guys, these Cinecom, I think they make the Dutch, Belgium, but they're brilliant. And they do a lot of cool stuff. Now, I think this is the one that is actually the link I provide. And I'll kind of walk you through some of these because what is visual effects you can do? Again, you, it, it's almost better to do these in After Effects, but these guys use um, Premiere. And I think it's kind of neat to see the, them use this. Here, you can download unlimited files. Which make Let's get going here. Harry Potter of Visible Clip. Come on. Look, what you're going to need is a green screen and a dark fabric. We are using an old brown curtain for that. Put them on top of each other so that one side is green and the other one is dark. Place your camera on a tripod and let your actor put on the green screen. Keep the camera rolling and jump out of the frame to have an empty shot as well. Now jumping into Premiere Pro, you place the empty shot on the bottom of your timeline and your green screen shot on top of that. Search for the ultra key effect and drag it to the top clip. 
Now with the color picker from the Ultra key, you can select the green to remove it. But we have actually a dedicated tutorial on how all the controls of the Ultra key works, and you can find that video in the description below. And because we have that empty shot in the background, it now seems like we can see through that cloak. Lorenzo! Where are you? Lorenzo! Where are you? Lorenzo! You don't always need to have a green screen to pull off a chroma key. If you can wait until there's a clean blue sky outside, simply film your subject from a low angle until that blue sky fills up the entire background. Important is that you expose for that background, so it's best that you close your aperture or use an ND filter, which are essentially sunglasses for your camera. If your subject is too much underexposed, then use a reflector to bounce some light back. You can also use a white foam board for that. Then going back into Premiere Pro, we can do the exact same thing. Drag the Ultra Key effect to your clip and with the color picker select the blue to remove the sky. Underneath your clip, you can place a stock image or video of a different sky. And this is a common technique called sky replacement. A question that we often get is what is the difference between a blue key and a green key? Well, essentially, there is no difference. In the old days, we would usually pick blue, as film is more sensitive for blue colors, which makes it easier to pull off a key. Digital cameras, however, are more sensitive to green colors, which is why the green screen is so common. Now, blue screens are still used when your talent is wearing something green, but that is, of course, hard to key in front of a green screen. Next up is a fun magic trick with colors. You want to wear a deep saturated t-shirt, now make sure that the colors of that t-shirt does not come back anywhere else in the background of your video. Jumping back into Premiere Pro, with your clip selected, head over to the Lumetri panel. On the bottom, you will find the HSL secondary tab. With the color picker, I can select the color of that t-shirt. By enabling the mask under the color selectors, you will see what Lumetri has already selected. But it's probably not going to be ideal. So from the top, you can choose the colors that needs to be selected. The top arrow defines the selection, and the bottom arrow will feather that selection for a smoother transition. The next selector is the saturation. Since our t-shirt is well saturated, I know that I have to select more of the right sides. There are a few red elements visible in the background, but since they are not as saturated, I can leave them out of the selection. And finally is the lightness or exposure of the red color. Play around with these settings until your mask selection looks good. You can then go ahead and disable the mask view. On the bottom, you will then see a bunch of color controls, which you can use to change the color of the red t-shirt to your desire. Did you know I could do magic? Nothing in my sleeves? If you want all the colors to be desaturated except for your t-shirt, then you want to click on the invert mask button. Now everything but your t-shirt is selected. And this means we can just decrease the saturation from the slider below to make everything black and white except for that one red t-shirt. The lightning is quite easy to make inside Premiere Pro, as there's literally an effect right. called lightning. So, like I said, these are very easy to follow tutorials. The most important you're going to see with a lot of is, you know, Zach King. That's the guy I was thinking about. That has all these like video based magic tricks that, again, you can type in Zach King tutorial and there's other visual effects tools there as well. A really important factor that he talks about in pretty much every one of his tutorials, as well as is kind of the standard is if at all possible, use a tripod because you do not want movement to the camera because you're doing, you're going to remove something. So it has to match up. And that's also where he says, do what's called a clean plate. Um, it's basically filming what your uh, actor or your character or whatever was standing in front of without them there. Because when you key out or take something away, you want to have the same background to replace what you've now taken away. So just I got very easy effects. Again, you could type in, uh, double exposure, find plenty of double exposure tutorials as well. But let me just go ahead here and just kind of walk us through in a nutshell what he's doing. Now, of course, I have a bunch of effect footage that I can play with here. So let's start off with this guy and the kittens and the stormy sky. Okay. So the example he gave was... Um, sky replacement. So let me go ahead and put a stormy sky in there. Okay. 
Now, again, remember I'm doing 1920 by 1080. Let me just put my marker out there. The stormy sky is pretty loud. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my volume. Six. Okay. And if I want to, I could even separate those so I can control it individually. But you see, this video of the stormy sky is actually not 1920 by 1080. So I need to come up with a scale to make it fit. Very important. See? Now, you can do a double exposure shot. Now, this is just a photo. See? And obviously, if this photo was white all the way around, I could probably do that with another layer as well. But what a photo, if you shoot video of somebody, this is the other tutorial I provided, you can then use the blending mode for that layer to then allow things to be see through or not see through. So, again, back to our opacity. And I'm going to put, the, I'm going to do this to the layer I just put in. Let's just play around with the basics of multiply. Well, multiply makes all the white transparent. What about a lighten? Lighten, the white is visible, but the colors underneath are not. So if I had a shot this video of somebody against a white wall in a white t-shirt, I can very quickly make all that see-through on the side. And that's a pretty cool fact. Or I could do an overlay, which is kind of a blend of the two. So you've got all these different neat little ways of double exposing uh, the layer you've got. Similarly, with kittens. Okay. Similarly, you can do that with video, as I stated. So here I've got these cute little kittens here. And then again, just come to the opacity settings. Again, let's go with multiply. Not really what I'm looking for. Let's go to lighten. Now you see the storm. And you see the storm shows up in the black values of the video. So it's one of those things where they're talking about doing double exposure video. You typically want to shoot your subject matter, that which is going to be on top, that's going to be see-through against a white background, but then use high contrast lighting so that the parts that you want the video underneath to shine through appear in the dark of top layer. And you see, we can do an overlay, which again, doesn't really do it. Now, overlay would work great because overlay means that your white is see-through. I'm sorry, your middle gray is see-through, but your black has not. Basically, it comes to this. Multiply, your white values are see-through. Lightener screen, it means that your darkest values are see-through to the bottom layer. Multiply, or I'm sorry, overlay is the middle gray. So true white is see-through true, and true black is not see-through. Now I could do that, just like I showed you before, I can make an adjustment here in the effects, okay? And instead of levels, let's go with the brightness contrast. And the brightness contrast, of course, will let me control how bright something is. Notice the brighter I get, the less see-through or the less see-through I get. Or I can say contrast to increase the contrast values. Which again, you see, if I increase contrast, right? Now only a lot less is visible through there. Okay. So neat little thing. Imagine if these cats were not up against that wall. You didn't get that drop shadow. You can get some cool, cool effects. Similarly, we saw that idea of a sky replacement. So here I just have some simple footage, project folder open of a sky. And this guy is not even you know, not 1920, 1080, I can tell you that. All right, let's do that. Now it does have some clouds here and it looks like there's like mist flowing along here. But for the most part, there is a pretty good value of blue. Back to our effects. Now this is using what it's called keying. Now I can use the ultra key, which is kind of like the really advanced key, or I could even just use a simple color key. Okay. And that means down at the bottom, it's saying key color. 
What is the color you want to take away? That value of blue. Okay. And I can increase the tolerance to take away all that color of blue. Now I got to be careful not to start taking it all away or else it'll eat into my, my, my greens. Okay. I can edge, I can feather, and just that quickly. Whoops. Um, So, and I've now done sky replacement. Pretty quick and easy stuff. So imagine again, you're at the beach. Yeah, I don't know. You're filming your uh, your buddy. You know, like pointing at the sky or something like that on a nice sunny blue sky day. And you could literally play around with you know replacing the sky, turning it into a thunderstorm. And even there's even lightning capability, which he talks about because he does this whole holding Thor's hammer and construct by lightning um, to you know bring lightning down. Neat stuff. All right. Close, close. No. Okay. What else do we have? Well, I have this footage, which has probably already been, so this is like the way the t-shirt works, right? The, the changing of the color of the t-shirt. And this is simply just a shot from the matrix, right? Now this has already been corrected. So they purposely, they probably had her wearing something other than red. They probably had her wearing like fluorescent blue or fluorescent yellow or something or even they'll use black light like they did in Sin City to make the, a, a, a glow of color. But what they're doing here is they did that so that they can make her dress be extremely red in an otherwise dull, unread world. The problem, of course, making this now change color is going to pick up some of the ears, her lips on the, uh, on the other subjects as well that have a little bit of red because it's gonna correct or change the color of all red in the entire clip. So this is again, back to our effects. And what they did here was they used a color correction called Lumetri Color. And that gives us a lot of like basic correction, creative color wheels, H and HSL and secondary. And HSL secondary simply means which is hue, saturation, and luminosity. I can say I want to change the color of her dress. Now, I can show the mask to show what color I've, I've clicked on, which means I can add more red, more red. Add, so I'm just adding more and more of that red by adding that red value to it. You see it's starting to get parts of her arms because they're picking up a little bit of that red as well. Okay. I could also adjust the hue levels by saying increase the red hue, increase or decrease the saturation value. It's getting under her arms a little bit because it's picking up values of red under her skin. I can even do a little bit of fade. And lumosity is the grayscale value. So you see, I can increase lumosity. Again, I'm trying. You can see it's picking up some of her hair and her lips here. Whoops, let me do that. And you can see I can also make adjustments like blur or denoise. To give myself a little bit of refinement. So right now, I have most of her dress selected. Now, let me go ahead and unshow the mask. And then come down here and you see now where I can mess around with the colors, see? Hints of blue. Now, what's only affecting right now is a little bit of blue because of temperature and tint. But you can see where I can change, and it's only again changing 
the color of the dress. Changing the color, but not changing a lot of the color. Add color, set color. Only what's active is what I'm changing. Phase. There we go. So now I can tint it more or less. But you can see how I'm actually making the change in color. So now, instead of having red, she's got a pink or a purple dress. Eh? But you'll notice it also changed the color of her lips and in some cases people's ears because they picked up a little bit more of that value. And look how it even does it as, see this guy's forehead goes a little purple there in the back as well. Or like they showed you in that tutorial, I can invert the mask. So now it's everything but her, right? And you see now I can get colorized everything but the dress and then come into the saturation move it down, and it's very Schindler's List here or other movies, right? Where, like I said, they did that with high contrast lighting in Sin City where you saw only color because they designated they picked that color up. I think it was the guy that was yellow in Sin City was actually blue because he was bright blue and they were filming him and lighting him. They were able to turn him into yellow for the film. Or, you know, they do that in a lot of other movies too. They make it like blood show up as red because, you know, they use bright yellow. So we can do some simple, quick color changes. Key thing. Last example I got here is actually using a green screen. Let's go ahead here, and I've got this empty bar. Okay. And let's go ahead and drag him in there. Let's say key system settings. Obviously, again, he needs to be scaled to 19, 20, 10, 80. Or, you know what, I'm not going to scale them, I'm going to leave them small like that. And this is just classic Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf ball going off. Let me see if I can find the clip I'm after. And again, you don't need a fancy green screen or blue screen. People go to the Joanne Fabrics and they just buy a good green fabric or a blue fabric and they just hang it behind them. This is, uh, you know, this is how you can cut, your, cut, cut people out of the background. Okay. There it is. Okay. Chop. Chop. Beginning. And I only want this. And because this is going to be on the top, I'm going to move this video up to V2. All right. So I got him kind of shy of raging here. Now let's go ahead and take away the green. Slow down, get a little bigger screen here. So we can see what we're doing. Effects. And I'm going to find again the keying function. Only this time I'm going to use what they use, which is the alter key. And let's put the alter key on him on the video. Here it is alter key, key color. Well, it's green. OK. 
Okay, but you see, even though I did the ultra key, it's not a very good green screen. See how just easily I have to adjust the tolerance. I can adjust the highlights and shadows. Now, I don't want to make him, him invisible though. Let's do a matte cleanup. I don't want to choke. There's the tolerance. Back the tolerance down a little bit so I get that to disappear. I could even come down here. You see, there's this thing called spill suppression. Spill suppression is the outer edge. And because he's was poorly lit, we got a lot of green. So I can see, come around here and play around to get rid of some of that green suppression. I could also color correct him. Well, I'm going to make him look a little warmer, not green. It's a little bit more saturation. How about? All right. Now I'm ready for my background, which is going to be this empty bar, which is why I put it on. There you go. And now I'm going to scale up the bar. Go ahead to him. Actually, shrink down to about 100%, and move him down so he looks like he's behind the bar. The problem, of course, is I need to cut off these legs. See that? Well, to cut off the legs, I'm going to use in the opacity section here a mask, right, to create a polygon mask which will allow me just gonna put this right along the edge of the bar, just like so. Like that. That from, of course, the mask needs to be inverted. Now you see he's actually behind the bar. Fine. You can actually see some of the issues I'm having by not starting with a new project every time. Do it! Oi! Audio levels. Where you at? Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow, so just do it. Okay, now, this is what we talked about even in the beginning of the class today when I was mentioning about, okay, lighting, shadows, reflections, right? Making sure they look like going all the way back to image manipulation. So really what I wanna do here is I really wanna cast a reflection of him in the bar because we can see the objects behind him in the bar. And there's actually a really neat, easy way to do this here. It's actually a pre-made effect. Okay. And that I believe is, let's see, it's a video effect. Let's see, perspective, stylize, time, transform, no, transition, no, utility, video. Hmm, where are you? Generates, distort, mirror. So I'm going to drag the mirror onto his layer. Now, let me move this down so we can see this mirror in action. Where's that at? Here's the mirror. Okay. Reflection center, reflection angle. Well, 
as I adjust this angle, where do I want the reflection to occur would literally be the full 90 underneath of him, right? But then I need to offset the center. Is that right? Maybe. Let me try to rewind my center. There we go, see? Now the problem with the reflection you see is that it's masked as well. So this is one of those things where because I created that mask to make him look like he was on top of the bar, I actually have to have two of them. So let me go ahead, unlink it. Duplicate it, because I've duplicated it. Oh, I didn't mean to duplicate, I hit Control D. Again, bad habit. Okay, remember, edit, duplicate is not Control D. Uh, clip, sequence. Oh, I don't have it selected. Oops. Yeah. Again, I did this a little sloppy. I understand that. But I'm trying to, it's been a while since I did, I'm just trying to get this to work. Let's see here. Maybe what I need to do is do this without the mask. And then I'm trying to think of the best way. Anyways, I'm looking that we're kind of running out of time here, but you can definitely see how you can do this. I just wanted to have a version of him. And in the past, I've actually just, like I said, just duplicated this layer. And then come along here, Let's take that mask path out on this top one. Let's mirror it. top one. Okay, so that's that guy there. And this one here, I can just flip it. Transform maybe. Sort of mirror. And that will allow me to scale the height. There we go. Position. So this is kind of like I did the uh, The dog. Shadow. But then he needs to have his mask as well or opacity shift. Overlay, and then I can do a blur. It's like this. Yeah. Right, because I just want that little sniveling. So this is, again, what you're seeing me doing here, it's no different than what the big blockbuster films do, right? Here we go, see? 
maybe even just have it be a little less passive. So it's there, but not over the top there. Do it! Just do it! And suddenly he looks like Don't he's there. Let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it, man! Right. So again, there you have it. Got it done. Let's save it. Export. Remember, file. Export media. That would be, of course, the third part, which is visual effects uh, tutorial. Um, and get those all outputted, uh, get them into a folder, zip that folder, and upload it for the submission for the assignment. Bye.